She was just shy of five feet tall, all of a hundred pounds, a part-time waitress and amateur poet from a poor Dallas home who was bored with life and wanted something more. He was a fast-talking, small-time thief from a similarly destitute Dallas family who hated poverty and wanted to make a name for himself. Together, they became the most notorious crime couple in American history, and their names were Bonnie and Clyde. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is megan megs spooky and this is spooky history with megs today we're gonna get into the last installment of my bonnie and clyde series where we left off on blanche barrow's video is they were caught by police and they were taken to a hospital or medical center for care and, and whatnot for the wounds that Mr. Buck Barrow had endured during the shootout at the last hideout they went to. Bonnie, Clyde, and the underage gentleman that we spoke about ended up making a run for it and made it through the woods and everything. They ended up still in a car and so on and so forth. The crime spree had began a later in 1932. Bonnie and Clyde began traveling with Raymond Hamilton, a young gunman, and Hamilton left them several months later and was replaced by William Daniel Jones in November. On November 22nd, 1933, a trap was indeed set to capture Bonnie and Clyde. So they were set by Dallas, Texas Sheriff and his deputy in an attempt to capture Bonnie and Clyde near Grand Prairie, Texas. But the couple escaped the officers gunfire hence they ran into the woods and uh got away they held up an attorney on the highway and took his car which they abandoned in miami oklahoma on december 21st 1933 bonnie and clyde held up and robbed a citizen at Shreve Port, Louisiana. On January 16th, 1934, five prisoners, including Raymond Hamilton, who was serving sentences that were totaling more than 200 years. They were liberated from Eastham State Prison Farm at Waldo, Texas by Clyde Barrow, accompanied by Bonnie Parker. Then two guards were shot in the process by the escaping prisoners with automatic pistols, which had been previously concealed in a ditch by Barrow. As the prisoners ran, Barrow covered their retreat with burst of machine gunfire. Among the escapees was Henry Methvin of Louisiana. In the last months on April 1st, 1934, Bonnie and Clyde encountered two young highway patrolmen near Grapevine, Texas. Before the officers could draw their guns, they were shot. On April 6th, 1934, a constable in Miami, Oklahoma felt mortally wounded by Bonnie and Clyde, who also abducted a police chief whom they wounded. The FBI had jurisdiction uh, solely on the charge of transporting a stolen automobile. Although the activities of the borough agents were vigorous and ceaseless, every clue was followed. Wanted notices, furnishing fingerprints, photographs, description, criminal record, and other data were distributed to all officers. The agents followed the trail through many states and into various haunts of the Barrow gang, particularly in Louisiana. The association with Henry Methvin and the Methvin family of Louisiana was discovered by FBI agents and they found that Bonnie and Clyde had been driving a car that was stolen around in New Orleans. On April 13th, 1934, an FBI agent through investigation in the vicinity of Ruston, Louisiana, obtained information which definitely placed Bonnie and Clyde in a remote section 
southwest of that community. The home of the Medfin was not far away. And the agent learned of visits there by Bonnie and Clyde. Special agents in Texas had learned that Clyde and his companion had been traveling from Texas to Louisiana, sometimes accompanied by Henry Methvin. The FBI and law enforcement authorities in Louisiana and Texas concentrated on apprehending Bonnie and Clyde, whom they strongly believed to be in the area. It was learned that Bonnie and Clyde, with some of the Methvins, had staged a party at Black Lake, Louisiana, on the night of May 21st, 1934, and were due to return to the area two days later. Before dawn on May 23rd, 1934, a posse composed of police officers from Louisiana and Texas, including Texas Ranger Frank Hamer, concealed themselves in brushes along the highway near Sales, Louisiana. In the early daylight, Bonnie and Clyde appeared in an automobile and when they attempted to drive away, the officers opened fire. Bonnie and Clyde were killed instantly. Death is at the steering wheel. The inevitable end, retribution. Here is Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker, who died as they lived, by the gun. Bonnie is seen leaning against Clyde. Clyde was a master gunman. Seldom did anyone ever live when Clyde got the first shot. Clyde Barrow's mania, his guns, spiked at last by the law. Two sawed-off shotguns, two machine rifles, ten automatic pistols, and 1,500 rounds of ammunition. That is all I have for you today. This is the last and final installment of Bonnie and Clyde. If you have any suggestions, please place them in the comments below. I will also have links of where I found this information from. I do hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you can. I'm trying to get to at least 200, maybe 300. Maybe 300 will be the goal. So make sure you share this video, like this video, and yeah, show your girls some love down there in the comments. So next time, this is Spooky History with Meg. Have a good day, guys. Mm -hmm.